your turn. The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of de Richet's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Bad loser. Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come, take a seat, my friend. A little nighttime stroll, Mr. President? There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. All right, we can hurry to answer the door, or we can let them knock. Dear Monsieur de Richet, please excuse me, but I am unable to join you at present. However, rest assured that we are doing all we can to resolve the case that concerns us. By the way, enclosed, you will find a key that will enable you to retrieve the personal effects your mother left behind. Yours faithfully, Lord William Mortimer. A very considerate, circle-shaped key. Inspiration of St. Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him by voices. The torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. All right, let's go and get the door. This is driving me nuts. Excuse me, am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? I bumped into her in the small salon before. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need 10 minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. I think he might be a helpful ally. 
Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. According to Washington, Lady Adams is in the small salon. I better hurry. Ah, my son. Oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. A thug, a Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French Revolutionary Government. You should do something, my son. Shit. I was supposed to make sure Adams wouldn't go back to her room. Don't worry, Your Eminence. I'll take care of it. Probably nothing to worry about. Do you want me to call for help? Please don't do anything. I'm sure with a little goodwill, everything will work out fine. Don't go and wake up the whole manor, please. Oh, thank you, my son. May God watch over you. <laughs> Who do you think you are? For okay, so at this point, I'm just going to point out that when I played through this previously, I, I helped her by persuading him not to keep going, and, and in the interest purely of uh, science, I'm going to not interfere in their fight this time around. Pardon me, sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. Hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business! I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave. What the hell is going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am! Stop! I beg you! I, I didn't mean to! Don't hit me, please, sir! Shit. If I step in, Adams might just run back to her room. And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's gonna suffer. Damn it, what should I do? I have to... Let it go! You filthy whore! I apologize, have mercy. Please have mercy. No! No! I apologize. No, no, no. Mercy, have mercy. Nah, nah, nah. I hate myself. Where's that smart mouth now? I'll teach you a little respect. No. Huh? No. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? What about the consequences? What are you talking about? The consequences of beating up one of Lord Mortimer's friends in his own house. You tell him about that and you'll have to answer to me. Okay, the dialogue timer. When the time limit is over, an answer is automatically selected. Check the dialogue timer at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, okay. Well, given the mess, talking's not gonna help anything. Jeez, I am being a real low life. Well, did you get time to search the room? Yes, I found out. Many things. Good. Did Elizabeth give you any trouble? Elizabeth? No. Well, you could have mentioned she was with a raving maniac, huh? What do you mean? She was with a Frenchman. He was about to beat her when I arrived. What the devil are you talking about? I thought he was going to kill the poor girl. Did you intervene? I did what was necessary to give you enough time to search her room. Good work, my friend. I knew that I could count on you. So tell me, did you find any information? Oh, yes. What I found is likely to upset you. What do you mean by that? Elizabeth is indeed the daughter of John Adams. Why pass her off as dead? I found her medical file. It appears that for many years, your mother was her personal doctor. From what I read, she behaved more like a butcher than a doctor. What are you talking about? I'm not a child. What's going on here? John believed that his daughter was possessed. He appealed to your mother to save her, but the treatment she inflicted on the poor child 
My God. Look, stop beating around the bush. What exactly did she do to her? Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? M my mother would never do something like that. But she did. And with the blessing of the Order. No, no, she, she wouldn't go that far. Prove it. Show me that file. I left it in her room so as not to arouse suspicion. My mother is not a monster. I do not doubt that your mother meant well. But the techniques described in the file, it, it is pure torture. Uh, please, I need some time alone. I have seen some horrors in my time. But if what is written in these damned documents is true, be brave, my boy. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time to head back to the journal, and we've got updates on... Napoleon Bonaparte is a young lieutenant in the French army. In his early youth, Napoleon was uprooted from his native Corsica, and thus he bore a grudge against the aristocracy, the clergy, and the French people who failed to accept him. He joined the French army with the firm intention of making a name for himself and of making history by proving his true worth. Searching for backing of any kind, he attracted the sympathy and support of Lord Mortimer. Invited to the latter's reception, Napoleon intends to prove his value to the world. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I was worried about you, my son. Uh, how did it go with Miss Adams? Uh, well, I don't really have many options here. It could have been worse. Let's say that Miss Adams will remember it for a couple of days. What? Did you not intervene? Of course not. What did you want me to do? That thug could have snapped me in half in two seconds. So, you prefer to let that fragile young lady take a beating rather than risk getting slapped around a bit yourself? Mr. De Ricci, your mother would not have been proud of you. Listen. Next time it happens, join me instead of hiding behind the door. If you're going to talk big, back it up. You should be ashamed. I will pray for your soul, my son. My son, I have another problem. I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the hall? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Okay, so this is an opportunity to get some graces back from him because ooh, the letter should look unsealed. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, Luis. Uh, give me one second, please. Faithful but immoral. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. You can count on it. Have a good night. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I better go to bed. I'll search my room tomorrow. If Mother stayed here right before me, you never know. And Mortimer had better show up. <laughs> Jesus. I can't believe that I had to let her take a beating. Well, it... <sighs> from memory. Washington gets some information, but maybe maybe not all of it. Um, <clears throat> I could have found out more about the men in my vision, yes. I could have found out more about plans involving myself. I could have had a remarkable encounter. Oh, gosh. I'm going to invest fully in politics. And with one more skill point, I'm going to put that into linguistics. Yeah, why not?
All right. In my vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind. Great, honey. <laughs> Nothing. Writing material. Idiots, I fear. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but. If you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Oh, I'm not far from solving the puzzle. I must keep searching. Strange leaps of logic. Look, markings on the floor. Eh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. I think we all were. There's a circle around the lock here. Must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richer to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. Lemon. Here's something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a lemon to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? Oh, 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 we've got some ash. Assess the value of the ash. <laughs> Take the candlestick. Come on, you dummy. the page with a candlestick. Oh, come on. Aha! It's working. The heat reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. After that, she adds, beware hero. The beast always charges the best protected soldier, and that's its weakness. What is my mother trying to tell me? If you've gone to so much trouble, you must not have only found something important, but you must have also felt like you were in great danger. Now I better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. 
I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Hall requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. I think we're good. Let's go. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. Ooh, all right then. Open invitation. Not him. That's the door to Elizabeth's room. For God's sakes, what happened in here? Looks like someone had a party. My dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better, and unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother if she still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you will be able to put all of this behind you one day. A chest with a half circle pattern. Might as well. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. Feet and hands are bound. A piece of cloth in the mouth prevents the tongue from being sectioned. It looks like preparation for an exorcism. Is Elizabeth really possessed? I'd say probably not. Looks like I found a box containing some kind of white crystals. These are magnesium crystals. A fairly effective remedy for easing anxiety. Uh, I don't really feel anxious, so I'm not going to eat one. A Chinese coin, recognizable by the hole in the middle. If I remember rightly, that's called a cash. June 11th, 1791. My dear Elizabeth, your last letter gave me much cause for concern. Your words were so cold, as if emotions no longer matter to you. Father maintains that the secondary effects of your treatment still trouble you, but that they will soon subside. Should I believe him? I cling to the belief that we shall soon see each other again, at long last, right soon. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. Don't forget to tell me what present you want. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my... Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. What have you got, Nappy? The Prince by Machiavelli. A perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm, that might come in handy. Well, he really just doesn't care about other people's books. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Powerly continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. Come on, you're in a French soldier's room, dude. 
Hannibal crossing the Alps. Another military success. Why do I get nothing but visions of horror in my room? And he gets victory after victory? The Battle of Alexander at Issus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. Jeez, he bitter much? It's a beautiful weapon. A Levy Damask blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. Person Getterix throws down his arms at the feet of Julius Caesar by Royer. Two great army chiefs. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. Amber. A fragment of amber. French actor Talma is Nero and Britannicus, the last emperor of the Caesar dynasty. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. I'm... I'm sorry. I should have stopped him from beating you. What's done is done. It was my fault, not yours. Don't say that. It's never the victim's fault. Look at your eye. My eye's nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing. So I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh, she's getting more and more agitated. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? The literal wounds. Um... I don't really have the skills to... I want to find out what really happened. No, you really don't want to know what your mother did when I shed my first blood at puberty. On the contrary, you can tell me anything. Let me be my own judge. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Uh... Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So, my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? 
No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fit stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's coming for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. out that for the record um, the last playthrough where I did intervene to stop Peru beating um, Abigail um, she still got the black eye so or she still had the black eye the next day so I'm not sure if that's a um, result of uh, my inaction something she did before or after What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? You have used four consumable items during a single quest or consumed a noxious element. Dialogue timer is no longer visible. Use a golden elixir to cure yourself. Um, if I just use one now, see if I can squeeze one out of you. You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. That's fine. I have no intention of swallowing this remedy. You see, I generally use it to put the shine back on my shoes. But maybe you'd rather I ask permission from Lord Mortimer. Where is he? I'd like to tell him about my shoe problem. Sir, need do nothing of the sort. There is no reason to disturb Lord Mortimer with this small matter. As you wish. Here you are, sir. I hope sir will have enough with one bottle, as I haven't any more. Oh, I'll make do. It's good of you to get this much. May I do anything else for sir? What is outside on the island exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise, sir, to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help, sir, in any other way? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. 
From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, Sir should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Yeah, except for my mother. Has Sir another question? <clears throat> Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Uh, oh. As for myself, yeah, I do not know. <laughs> Peru looks totally out of place here. I'm not sure. <laughs> He's counting the tin sets of cutlery around each plate? The man is completely lost. Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Of course. Please feel at home. Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason, and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, 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 oh I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> A Prussian Britannic coalition is not good for France. The last time we fought against them, our empire went up in smoke. Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Soudan, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The fine the finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the oh, orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I made a promise. Now it is done. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. What do you think of Volner? Many believe he is the real leader of Prussia. A charming man, but with an iron fist and a velvet glove. I also know he's famous for his love of the hunt in all its forms. Oh? My friend. Oh, dear. Have you any information on this Napoleon? <laughs> Lord Mortimer has invited Napoleon along to negotiate an important commercial venture. Nothing strange about that. And the Golden Order is somehow involved. What? Our order? Are you sure? That's what I read in the letter from Mortimer to Napoleon. Hmm. This information is important. Thank you, Louis. Monsieur de Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? <laughs> Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course. But I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'Or for 200 cannon. Absolutely. 50,000 Louis d'Or in hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 Louis d'Or, Monsieur de Richet. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. <laughs> so, you're wasting my time. I need to work with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped me. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? Uh, Counter-revolution, reinstate the monarchy, new a leader. Uh, people should be free to choose, and other people are stupid. The revolution was a good thing, but it gave birth to a monster. We must overthrow the new system in place. Ah, you are right. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Mr. Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture, and please know that I, too, am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer, and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, 
I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Washington is a very gifted speaker. Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Pretty complete to me. Eight points available. Sweet. Okay, so let's get linguistic. Let's also get some conviction. Um, I don't like not being able to do those. We've got one point left in agility. I don't think that's something that we can pick up from books, uh, but we'll throw one down. 